Let's rewind the story. Your friend is in the bed. Who's in bed with him? What's he say? Go away. I'm in bed with my children. Now, this is a different culture. We, we go in bed with your children. That sounds weird. Well, that's because we're so blessed in our culture that we have multiple bedrooms and multiple beds. You're talking about a culture that had one big room. Okay? And in that big room was a, was a cot or a mattress or a blanket. And on that lay the family. And so whenever you don't go to bed in waves, I mean, how, how's two people going to sleep on this side with the other person's cooking dinner? So it was bedtime. Everybody went to bed. The father says, we're done. I've locked the door. Kids are in bed. I'm in bed. I'm not getting up. Let me ask you, where are the children in the story? In bed. Next to the father. Your friend in the bed with the children, you outside the house, knocking on the door consistently till your knuckles bleed, trying to get what it is you need. Jesus turns right around after the story and says, if a son were to ask, what would a son get? Where is the son in the story? Right beside the father. Where's Jesus trying to put you in the story? Right beside the Father. Jesus is contrasting to you the way two different people in the story would ask. The guy on the outside of the door who feels a separation feels like he has to knock over and over and over again. But let me ask you, what if little Johnny woke up in the middle of the night and was thirsty? Does little Johnny need to get up, go outside, close the door, and knock on the door? And ask dad to give him a cup of water. No, what's little Johnny need to do? Just ask. Just ask. Just wake daddy up. Just tug on daddy a little bit. Knock on daddy's arm a little bit. Hey, dad, I'm thirsty. Did you see what Jesus is trying to tell his disciples? Look, fellas, you've treated prayer as if you are a, mi a thousand miles from God. And he needs you to get serious. But I say to you, if you'll treat prayer as a son talking to his father, when you ask, the father responds. And so for too long, we have treated prayer as this need to be persistent and consistent and show God we are serious, when in reality, we should have just been going to God as a father, as a son going to his father. Don't ever read this story again and brag that what you really need to do is get serious with prayer and knock. You can do that. If you want to live your life knocking and working and showing God exactly how much it is that you believe Him for, then you go right ahead. You have the right to stand outside the door and knock all day long. Me, I'm worn out of knocking on doors. I had a revelation that I'm one of Daddy's children. For as many as have received Him, He hath given them the authority to call themselves the children of God who believe on His name and are born not of flesh, not of the work of men, not of blood, but are born of God. That is me. I have a Christian heritage, but I wasn't born again because my daddy was a preacher. And I wasn't born again because I had it in my bloodline. And I wasn't born again because I did all the right stuff. So none of it was the work of the flesh or the work of man or the work of my parents. It was me receiving who he is. And it took me years to get into a revelation that I'm a son and not a slave and not a servant. Because I spent the large portion of my Christianity as a slave for God. As a servant for Jesus. Trying to work my way home. When I had the revelation that I'm a son, I moved out from on the outside of the door and jumped into the bed with the father and I believe now that all I have to do is whisper and the father is so close he can hear every single thing I say I am in the bed with him and you are there as well Amen. this story is to show you that you can pray as a friend on the outside or you can pray as a son on the inside verse 9 that pivotal verse I say to you ask and it's given seek and you'll find knock and it'll be open is not Jesus saying just ask more just knock louder just seek with more intensity. This sermon was already ready. It was already in my spirit, in the notes, ready to go. Turned on the television this morning. I don't know where this preacher was from. Maybe it was local. And, and they reached over with their fist onto their big... This, this morning, reached over with their fist onto their big pulpit and said, I tell you what, started knocking. I went, wow, this, this is incredible. This is the whole... If I, if I've ever seen the Holy Spirit rile my spirit up for a sermon, man, he poked it today. 
And this preacher said, and, and the, the, the weird thing was the message was so covenantally beautiful. That's why I was still watching, which is hard to find, I'll be honest. It was covenantally beautiful that God is full of grace and mercy and love. And then they were going through the new covenant and all of its benefits. And then they said, you have the right to talk to your father. You have the right to petition your father to have him hear your prayer. And I thought, yes, that's what I'm going to preach today. And then that fist came out. And I went, no, don't, don't knock. And they knocked and they knocked for like 10 times and said, but you got to be serious about it. If you want the father to hear you, how many of you know you're going to have to knock and knock and knock? And everybody in the place amened and shouted and cried. And my spirit cried because I went, see, God, here's where your people are. They have so distanced themselves from you. They think it's normal to have to beg dad over and over and over and over because that puts us in the driver's seat. Because how many of you know when the guy finally gets up to come to the door, there's a sense of satisfaction inside of you that went, yeah, you know why I got it? Because I stuck with it. Or it causes you to walk across a multi-million dollar platform and wave your arm and go, you see all of this? We got it. I got it. Because I didn't stop knocking and it just pampers the flesh that has been working so hard to try to receive from God. But I'm here to tell you, the father has his sons and his daughters lying next to him in the bed. If you need something, just whisper to Jesus. 